In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're gonna take a look at a knife that I have been wanting to look at for a long, long time. I finally broke down and bought one just so I could play with it and show it to you. I'm talking about, are you ready? The Becker BK-9 Combat Bowie. Oh yeah, that's what's coming up next here on Survival On Purpose. Welcome back to Survival On Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, as I said, today we're going to take a look at the BK9 Becker Combat Bowie. And I have to say, I think the very first time I was aware of these BK series knives was from Chris Tanner with Prepared Mind 101. And I think he was a big fan of the BK7. I think that was his Jessica knife. Um, and I almost bought the BK7, but you know me, I like me some of them big knives. So I went big or went home. I went big and went with the BK9. And we're going to talk about that. But first, um, like I said, I bought this one. And the way I'm able to do that and keep these Sharp Saturdays going is through the support of Big Daddy Unlimited. And that's through your support, actually, because the way that works is um, if you join Big Daddy Unlimited at a trial version of 99 cents for the first month at the link of survivalonpurpose.com slash BDU, that'll get you there. And, and you like it and it saves you money because it saves me money every year then you stick around and, and it's either 10 bucks a month after that or 99 bucks a year and if you like it and it's saving you money you stick around they'll throw me a couple of bucks for introducing you so it's a win-win for everybody if you win if, if you don't like it then then i don't i don't get paid either so i i think that's a good way of doing things so anyway let's talk about this bk9 like i said i first learned about these bk knives from chris tanner at uh, prepared mind 101 and uh, he had a Jessica knife. I think it was the BK7, a little bit, the next version down seven inches. And he, he didn't like this, This, you know, he, he modified his. He stripped this coating off and, and put some tennis wrap on the handle and stuff and it turned out pretty good. Um, I may wind up stripping the coating off this one because I don't like this rough coating either, but it's there to protect it and keep it from, um, keep it from deteriorating and getting rusted because let me just talk about the specs this thing real quick and we'll get to doing some knife stuff. You might notice that I'm not at the Survival and Purpose Worldwide Headquarters cutting edge knife testing facility. Um, so, but we're gonna go back there before this video is over and check out the balance orientation and rotation device because you know I got to, but I want to kind of give you a little different, different uh, scenery for this one. So anyway, no stump top here. So we're just gonna talk about the specs of this thing old school. Let me hold it up here where you can see it. So this uh, features an overall length of 14 and three quarter inches. Oh yeah, baby with a nine and a half inch blade, two inches tall of 1095 steel, 1.188 inch, 1 inches thick, has a really high saber grind. They said it's a flat grind on their website. It ain't a flat grind, it's a saber grind. Nice little thumb ramp here with some, some pretty aggressive jimping on it. The handles are what they're calling um, ultra mid, um, some sort of synthetic. Uh, it bolts on so you can change these out. A lot of people make aftermarket handles for these has an exposed uh, pommel here and a big lanyard hole. And it's a clip point design. They're calling this a combat bowie. So the sheath that this knife comes with is a polyester sheath. The sheath's made in China. The knife's made in the USA. Has a plastic liner, goes in, has a snap closure right here. And uh, there we go. And then on the back, there's a belt loop that has both Velcro and a snap for security. Then it has a molly attachment right here. On the front side, it has a little another plastic liner for a little neck knife sheath that um, I can't remember the name of it, but but it's another BK little neck knife and a big pouch here with elastic. You can put a survival kit, a sharpening stone, uh, anything in there, and this is Velcro. So really nice sheath in my opinion. So why don't we get to doing some of that knife stuff now? Okay, so. I brung this up to the top of the picnic table just to make it easier on the camera. Not really sure what kind of wood this is. Um, I call it cast iron wood because it's hard as a rock, but it's um, really, really solid. And I thought this is a big old knife. We'll do some chopping here. So we're just gonna do a little chopping on this. Um, I cut it off with my, cut, the, cut this thing off. It was laid on the ground. I cut it off with my Agua Boreal 21 saw, which is always handy to have, but you don't got a saw maybe you want to chop so let's just see how well this thing chops now are we in camera here let's just do it oh man look at that look at it bite oh it's so good
<laughs> Not bad. Okay, well, since we're uh, done chopping, let's uh, do a little batoning. You know what I forgot to do? I keep forgetting to do this on these knife reviews. Let me do a redneck sharp test after doing all that chopping. Let's just see. Oh man, look at that. Wow. That's a big old blade and you could shave with it. Even the part that I chopped with, even the part of the edge I chopped with. Wow. That sucker is stinking sharp. Okay. Let's do a little batoning now. Get up here where you can see it. Obviously this is big enough to baton this piece, but I just want to get in there, see how well it does some regular knife stuff. So here we go. Let's just do it. You ready? Oh, piece of cake, man. Nothing to it. All right. I had no doubts about that. What about some carving some uh, curls? You want to do that? Let's do that. I mean, why not? Because it's a big old knife. It's got a nice sharpening chore here. I didn't show you, by the way, which means you can get this edge all the way down. No wasted space on a finger chore because you got your handle right up here. Handle's got a nice little loop here, kind of a, a, a stick, not loop, but a kind of a protrusion here. So great for chopping. It really was comfortable in my hands. Let's see how well this big old knife carves some curls. I'll see if, if, if I think they're going to be dry enough to, to strike. I don't know. It's been laying on the ground. It's been raining for a couple of days here now. Okay, we're going to cut that off and just try a ferro rod. You know, what the heck, right? I don't even know if this thing will strike a ferro rod. Let's just see. Not good, not really, not really well it won't. I think the wood's wet. Let's just see if it'll strike with the, the old uh, emergency ferro rod. So yeah, it does. So, yeah, not, not a really, really sharp spine there to be honest with you. So, but let's just see one more thing because you know how I like to roll, put you out. We don't want to catch anything on fire here. Let's try some fat wood. See if it'll scrape some fat wood. So we got a little fat wood there, just a little. Now let's try this now. Okay, man, I love me some fat wood. Okay, so that was some of the uh, practical use testing, I guess you call it, of the uh, Becker uh, K-Bar BK nine combat buoy and let me just give you my quick rundown or um, kind of thoughts about that so a really good chopper this handle gives you a really good grip lends itself to chopping really well it's got enough mass this part up here does really that just seems to be the sweet spot to me for chopping but this part down here was straight up still is airplane shaving sharp feels really good in your hand this handle's got a nice swell to it here um, it's a big old knife, but it's pretty well balanced. Um, and the one thing that I would say I'm going to probably do to it, I might strip the, uh, the coating off of it, but I'm certainly going to put a, a little bit of a file here, just enough to get myself something that will really, really strike a ferro rod really well, because that's just me. 
And I might even do it here, but I, I, it's, it's easier for me to use this than it is to try to do that. But anyway, of course I could do that with it in the sheath. So I don't know, we'll, 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 I'll let you know about that. We'll do a follow up because this, this one's gonna deserve another video. But speaking of balance, okay, well, as you can see, we are now at the cutting edge blade testing facility at Survival on Purpose Worldwide headquarters because you know I'm all about the science here and we have to test the aerodynamic balance of this knife and we're gonna do so as always on the balance orientation and rotation device. So I have to uh, kind of get my calibration distance right, but I think, I think I've got it right, let's just see. Mm, not quite. It's always kind of good to start with that so you can see how tough the blade is. <laughs> A little better. Shall we try again? Oh, I missed the whole target. But it, it did stick, so I can't blame the knife for that one. Again? Oh man, that one was pretty good. So, since it seems to be calibrated pretty well, what I thought I would do is, since I've got this fancy dancy new camera, I'm gonna switch it over to a higher frame rate per second so maybe we can do a little better looking slow motion. And there's no audio on this, so you just have to, uh, go, here's what I would, while you're watching this, just do this, go whoop, 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 whack, when it hits, try that. Okay, well, hopefully that looks pretty cool. I just thought it might be fun. So let's give it one more throw for the science and we'll wrap this up. Okay, well, like I said, we're gonna call this one balanced. And I gotta say, I, uh, I wish I had taken a look at this knife years ago, really, um, when I first um, found out about the BK line from Chris Tanner. Again, it prepared my 101. Um, this is an absolute beast. It, uh, give you a quick, my quick wrap up, I guess. Um, it's a great chopper. It, this, you can see the, the, the finish is kind of worn right up here. That was kind of like the sweet spot for me for chopping. Chops really good. The, uh, the edge on it here though, still even after all, all the work, <laughs> it's still like I could shave with it and I'm not going to, but pretty cool there. Um, a lot of people don't like these handles. They think they're kind of slippery or whatever. Um, you know, they feel pretty good in my hand. They've got a nice swell right here, a little swell, a little bit of a swell here. This nice kind of a uh, return here when you're chopping. And, and I wear medium gloves, so I've got a little bit of room. I think if you have bigger hands, you still have plenty of room to grab a hold of it. I like to grab a hold of it. That's a Georgia saying right there, by the way. I like this sharpening choil right here that gives you uh, gives you the maximum cutting length right up close to your hand, but it still lets you sharpen all the way to the edge of it, which is pretty cool. Um, it's really handy. It is very balanced and it's just a really great knife. I like the fact you can change these scales. What else do I like about it? I like the, the edge on it. I like the saber grind. I like the fact that even though it's a big knife and it's kind of a Bowie style knife, the, the, the point is still pretty, pretty much center line. So if you need to use this thing for drilling, you know, getting started, whatever you can. Um, man, I wish I could give you, get you a close up of this grind, but it's, it's really, really, really even. Um, I, I'm not really good at that with this camera, but so those are the things I like about it. Uh, if there's anything I don't like about it, I'm not a huge fan of this rough coating. Um, <clears throat> you can see it's kind of worn off a little bit already and it, uh, it cleans up okay, but it still, it, it holds dirt. I don't really care about that. I'm not, I'm not that guy that polishes his knives, but, um, it's, uh, it kind of, it, it, to me, it just kind of gets in the way sometimes when you're, when you're trying to carve it, if you're doing really fine stuff, because it kind of wants to drag. Um, but they're calling this a combat buoy, and I think it would be very, very good in that application. I mean, if you had to swing this or, or you know, give it the old Daniel Boone fight with this, you probably could. Thumb ramp uh, doesn't bother me. I don't really use that that much, to be honest with you. When I, I just, I'm more of just a regular holder. I don't really do a whole lot of that when I'm carving, but it will give you a little extra control. Um, 
I wish that something was sharper on it to strike a ferro rod. That might do it there, but to me, that's just always awkward. It's easier for me to use that part of the blade right there, and it doesn't need much. I think just removing this, this, this coating might really help it, but uh, just a little bit of a file there, literally five, five minutes or less, two minutes, 30 seconds with a file would probably take care of that issue. And I like the sheath. Um, I like the, well, we're still talking about, so I was talking about things I like and then things that I don't like, and now I'm talking about things that I like again because I like way more about it than, than, than I dislike about it. I like the sheath, I think it's really good. I like the fact that it has an ab, a built-in place with a plastic liner for a little neck knife. There you go. The other thing I really like about it is the fact this knife is made in the USA. Even though the sheath is not, the sheath's made in China, it says so right there in that little tag underneath there, but the knife itself is made in the USA and it's a really solid knife and you know I like a big knife anyway. So I think that's everything. I think I've rambled enough about this knife. It's a really cool knife um, and if you're looking for a, a big old honking knife that'll get the job done, this not, might not be a bad, a bad one to look at. So I'm not my, it wouldn't be a bad one to look at. So how about that? So anyway, I will endeavor to wrap this up. Uh, I want to say a big thanks again to the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for making these kind of sharp Saturday videos possible by saving folks like you enough money so they're able to throw folks like me a couple of bucks for introducing you. Um, and as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and every Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. I've had several people tell me that, that the Survival on Purpose videos are not showing up in their feed. So if you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, I invite you to go to survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe. Get signed up for my weekly email newsletter. Every week I'll send you one email with links to my current videos, usually a link to an old video so you can see that, yep, I've always been a doofus, and any other news offers or stuff I think you might be interested in. So anyway, I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.